Hello and welcome to the channel. In this video, I will create REST APIs by using route.js file, which allows us to create custom request handlers for a given route. Here, I will build a cloud application, but I will not be using server actions and won't write any client side code on the server. Instead, the front end will be totally client side, and here will be segregation of client side and server side code. The base will be MongoDB, and I will use Axios to make HTTP request. First, let's create the next step by npx create next step public test. Give a name to the project. I will use JavaScript instead of TypeScript, and the rest of the options will be yes. Then install Mongoose and Axios. Now let's start the application by npm run dev. Before I start creating the API routes, I will create the model of the schema for the database. The database will be a list of smartphones in stock, their prices, brands, and quantities. So in the app directory, create a folder called model and inside it create a javascript file called product.js to build the schema import mongoose then declare and initialize a new mongoose schema called product schema by new mongoose to schema it will contain the values for name brand price quantity and date So I will put name, type string, then there will be the brand, this should be, can be a type of string, and then price, and then the date at, at which the record was the entry was made now let me also put the quantity of items since next renders the model only once we will pass an empty object to mongoose the models this way it won't be throwing any errors and then export the model module.exports is equal to mongoose.model the within commas products comma products schema to connect to the database i will create a separate javascript file called db connect inside a directory called use the file will export a default function that connects to the mongodb and then I will import and call the function whenever it will be needed. So let's first import mongoose. Equal to require mongoose. And then export default function. This function will have to be asynchronous. db connect. Then await mongoose.connect. MongoDB localhost, or should, or you can you should put the actual uh, IP address of the localhost. That is one twenty seven zero zero one two seven zero one seven. And next products will be the name of the collection. Also, use new URL parser select is true use unified topology will also be true save the file next is uses a file based routing system where folders are used to define different api routes which is similar to defining routes for different pages let's create a folder called api 
inside the folder i will create another folder called product route and this folder will contain a file named route.js so the name of the route will be product route and like paste.js file which serves the ui for the web page the route.js file will serve the api endpoint if you go to the next.js 13 documentation and click on the file convention under api reference and then go to route.js tab here you will see the code for different http methods since i am using javascript i will select js and copy the post method in the route.js file now i will return a response message as post But in Next.js 13, we have to use Next Response, which is an extension of native request interface. So I will import Next Response from Next Server and replace Response with Next Response. In order to test the endpoint, I will open Thunder Client and make a new request. You can use Postman instead of Thunder Client if you want to. Enter the URL as http colon double slash localhost colon 3000 slash api slash product route. Select the post method and click on send. You will receive the response message and the endpoint is working. Now let's get an entry to the database. First, import a mongoose model products then import the db connect function and call the function to connect to the database inside the post method declare the name brand price quantity and then destructure the json data sent along with the request Declare a new instance of the product to save the product. Let new product equal to new product. And within basis, enter the name, brand, price, and quantity. Now save the product. Await new product.save, which is a mongoose function. Now in place of post, I will write product saved and save it. To create a record in a database, go to Thunder Client. Under the body tab, click on JSON and enter the details of a smartphone. I will give the name Galaxy M04. The brand is Samsung. And the price is rupees eight thousand four ninety nine. And let's say the quantity is twelve. Now let's click on send. I think there might be an error. Yes, there should be a comma here. Press send again. Okay, the product is saved. We can also check in the MongoDB compass if the product is present or not. Yes, it is here. So the put so the record is saved. In order to get the records from the database, we run the get function in the same route.js file export async function get request
and in the function block declare a variable called product which will store all the records product the find is a mongoose function which retrieves the product collection from the database that we will return the variable as json Let's test the endpoint. Make a new request in Thunder Client. Copy and paste the URL. Then send a GET request. And it's working. Since the update delete operations will be performed on individual items, we will be using dynamic routes. Dynamic API routes are created in the same way as dynamic pages. We will have to create a folder for the dynamic route and place the name of the folder within square brackets. And inside the folder, there will be a route.js file which will contain the update and delete endpoints. So let's create a folder called id with square brackets and inside it create a file called route.js. One more thing, one route folder cannot contain more than one dynamic route. In this route.js file, I will import the products model and db connect function. Call the function to connect to MongoDB. Also import next response. Now create an endpoint for put request and send the message. Let's test the endpoint. I have also added a few more products to the list. Let's copy an ID from one of the products and make a new request. Enter the URL and at the end paste the product ID. Select put and click on send and the endpoint is working now we declare a variable called id which will contain the request url we can see this by console logging the variable What we need to do is to get the last part of the URL, which is the ID. Now, if we split the URL, which is a string, by its slashes and console log it again, we will see that it gives an array of strings. And the sixth element in that array is the ID. So we retract the fifth index of the array. Well, credits should be given. Where it is due, I learned about this technique from a similar video in the YouTube channel called Indian Coders. The front end will send updated information in the form of JSON data similar to post request. So I will just copy and paste it over here. Then declare a new variable, updated product. Products.findById and update is a mongoose function that takes in the id of the record as the first argument and the new values as the second argument.
and I will send the next response the updated product and the message now in that hunter client uh, for the put request I will be sending some data as a registration data uh, so I will just head over to the get request and copy the first entry and paste it in for the body listen body then along with the name I will just add crystal blue color and send it okay I am receiving the message let's go to a check request and get request and check it out again okay the put request is working here I will have to paste the base at the end and in place of put request I will write product updated send it again okay so the put is working now for a delete it is nearly same as put request here I will be typed the ID in the same way as the put request and then cons deleted product equal to await products dot find by id and delete which is again a mongoose function then i will pass in the id and return the next response next response dot json message product deleted and the deleted product save it now, now let's create a new request first go to the get get request and i will copy this id for the vivo and in the delete request paste the id at the end select delete and then send the request okay the product is still there and also seek it in the get request also okay so until now that was all about creating rest rest apis now i will design the ui for the front end i will just head over to paste.js file and i will first of all use it will simply be a purely client component so i will use client so that i can use react and its hooks like use there and use effect and also I will be able to use add event sinners like on click and on sense so this is nearly same as older versions of Next.js or using react and node.js so first of all let's create a form this will be for the product name then the input text name will be name id will be name and placeholder will be smartphone and the class name I will give the input fields a shadow externals shadow slate 500 width of 75 percent it's 10 height of 10 and padding of 2 and the outline will be known when you will be entering the details Let's say in this arrange this a little bit more. 
and I will copy the input field please paste it in the next one and this one before the brand the same thing again for the price also And lastly for the quantity save it and let's check it again okay so let's remove the labels I don't think they are necessary And I will also remove the boiler CSS. Let's add a button now. The padding of two background color of orange 500 on over the cursor will turn to, turn to pointer and on over the background color which seems to red and text will be white submit let's give a break And for the input field, I will give them a margin of 5. So, sorry, 10 or 5 here. Yeah. Okay, now it's looking better. Also, I have to give a margin in the, for the submit button also. Now, let's create the states name set name use state be a string copy and paste it three more times next one will be for the brand and then it will be for the price the last one will be for the quantity now let's declare a function and then submit to make the post request Once product object is subject will take the order name brand price and quantity just a key value pairs and i will send it along with the axios post request also import axios and i will axios dot post and here just and write in just api and the name of the route Folder product route, or you can also write if you want to look at those HTTP look at those at the beginning of the URL, and then the product object, and then it will send the alert that I posted. Save it now. Let's add some on change event listeners. Then even set name e dot target dot value copy it and paste it and for brand set brand and for price set price and at the last for the quantity then 
on click call the function and then submit okay let's try it now uh, iphone 6 apple rupees 20,130 26 submit okay, let's check it send the send request here it's, the form is working now to display the products I will declare a function cons get data okay, do a sync you know set up a trackage block cons response is equal to await axios to get and send the URL slash API slash product route cons and before I do anything I will declare a new state product array this array will contain the area of product sent by the send in the request no, send in the response cons product you can do response to data set product array products then set up the cache flow error and I will console of the error if there is any then I will call the function now to display the products if last name give it a margin of 10 all around it and product array dot map elements return and set up a list you will ally so they have flex spaces of one and there will be five of them flex and justify between and the unique key will be the id of the element with the element dot name and then element dot brand element dot price element dot quantity and the last one will be the options that will be the delete and the edit buttons background orange 500 text white and we delete the, the next one we update okay, save it let's try to display it okay it's working something is wrong these one products okay the display items are working I am getting everything I just give a margin little bit of margin at the bottom Next for the update, I will be using the same phone. But before that, I will just make another entry here. Post 
update it and it enter the quantity so in the update function i will try to update the quantity of the motorola so for that what i will do i will use the same form but there will be two buttons here one the submit button will be visible by default but the update button will not be visible by default when i click on the update button means the on the this form not the form the items it will display the update button and populate the form with the details of the product that we that i want to id update so consent and submit and i will update the states with the info of the kind of the product that i want to update and i will set the visibility to true and i will also declare a new state that is the product id now here i will set up a ternary operator to visibility The visibility is false. I will display this if it is true. I will display the update and vice versa. See me handle update. And I will pass in the name, brand, price, and the quantity of the product in the handle. Warning and error. Spinning the visibility. Also, on click, I will now call the function handle edit. Declare the function handle submit handle update. Hello, is sync. This will be same as the creating new products or submitting new products. So I'll just copy and paste it here. In case of post, it will be put and I will pass in the ID for the product and I will use template detail to add the product ID at the end of the URL and this should be put let's try it this place is reversed okay let's try it again and with the handle update I will, and sorry handle edit i will have to pass in the name brand and price and 
so this will be element dot name element dot brand and element dot price and the quantity also the id of the record and in the handle up there we will pass in the id see we can try it now it is not working because this will be product id now let's try it again okay, okay. this time it's working Try another one. Yeah, it's working. Now for a delete operation, I will create a function. Comes delete part. and I will pass in the ID of the product as the argument. And make a delete request. Where axios axios to delete and just copy and paste the url from here and then i will send the alert as product deleted save it and in the delete button i will call the function and pass the element.id as the argument Okay, done. Let's try it now. I will delete the product. Okay, it's working. So, thank you for watching this video, and I will see you on the next one.